These are the Ray-Ban Meta Wayfarers, and they're the latest smart glasses from Meta. And honestly, compared to the last ones, these are incredible. Ooga. <laughs> All the way back in 2021, Ray-Ban and Meta released their first version of their smart glasses, the Ray-Ban Stories. And I actually did a full review on those glasses back then, and I'll be honest, they weren't the best. Not only was the video and picture quality not great and also cropped to a square for whatever reason, the sound quality kind of sucked, the battery life kind of sucked, and also they didn't come in that many styles. And for a pair of smart glasses that you're supposed to wear on your face, you want them to look good. And it's not that they didn't look good, at least on some people's faces, it's just they didn't have enough options for everybody. And now in 2023, Ray-Ban and Meta are back at it again. I keep hearing this sound in my ear whenever I put these on. And they're releasing the brand new Ray-Ban Meta Wayfarers. And not only are they releasing Wayfarers, but they're also releasing some more styles and a lot more colors. Plus, now you can get standard lenses, transition lenses, or even polarized lenses if you want, which is a pretty big improvement. And I've been rocking these for like the last week since they first came out, and I've got to say, I'm impressed. Now to be fair, my expectations weren't that high because of the last Ray-Ban stories, but these are significantly better in almost every way. So first off, let's talk about wearability, because if you're putting something on your face, you want it to look good, because it's on your face. And even though these Ray-Ban Meta Wayfarers are definitely thicker than standard Wayfarers, they actually look pretty similar on your face. Obviously there are some noticeable differences like cameras instead of those little like bead things that are usually there, but overall generally a similar look. And actually in college I worked at Sunglass Hut, which is owned by Luxottica, the company that also owns Ray-Bans, and so I have some decent experience with sunglasses in general, and I've got to say that these feel great on face and they look good. And I'll be honest, I was fully expecting to return these after the review because I didn't think I was going to like them, but after the week of having them, I might keep them. So like I mentioned before, they come in two new styles, the Wayfair, which is the classic Ray-Ban look, and the Headliner, which is also a pretty classic look. And I definitely think that these two new smart glasses styles are much more wearable than the previous versions. And like I mentioned before as well, they also come in a bunch of different colors. You've got this matte black, you've got a glossy black, you've also got the jeans color, which is actually a semi-translucent blue where you can see through to the tech inside. That's a very cool color and I actually kind of dig it. As far as fit, they do feel pretty much the same as standard Wayfarers. They are slightly heavier, but not noticeably heavier. And they actually actual fit of them on my face feels great. There's no like looseness. I'm not dropping them at all or anything like that. Usually with regular sunglasses, you can kind of bend this back part a little bit to kind of fit around your face a little bit better if it doesn't. In this case, I don't know if you can do that because there's some tech inside the glasses. If I had the translucent ones, I would know for sure, but I don't. So I'm not 100% sure if you can bend these. I wouldn't be surprised if you could a little bit, but oh, make it a noise, make it a vibration. But the good news for me is that they fit, so I'm not going to have to adjust them. And I genuinely think that for most people, this will also fit their face. She's always yelling at her kids. But obviously the frames are not the only thing that matters when it comes to glasses. The lenses, in a lot of cases, are the most important part. And the good news is, for these smart glasses, you do have a couple different options. The first is obviously standard sunglasses. You can get polarized or non-polarized. Again, I used to work at Luxottica at Sunglass Hut, and we'd always recommend polarized because genuinely, it does actually really help with glare. So I always go polarized whenever I grab sunglasses. However, it can make it kind of weird whenever you're holding your phone with a screen protector, you get some of that rainbow effect. But honestly, you get used to it. Now, obviously, polarized sunglasses are more expensive than standard sunglasses, but not by much, usually $20 to $50, depending on the frame or the lens. In addition to that, you can also get prescription lenses. However, the prescription lenses only range between minus six and plus four. So if you have eyes that are outside of that range, you're kind of screwed. You might have to wear contacts or get your own custom lenses made. Unfortunately, my eyes are worse than a, uh, <laughs> than a minus six, which is pretty awful. So for me, it's all about the sunglasses variant of this pair of smart glasses because that's all I can really wear with these. I guess I could get one that doesn't have any prescription, but then I'm just wearing glasses to wear smart glasses. So I don't know how I feel about that personally, as a glasses wear. And not only that, but you can also get transition lenses, which obviously are gonna be more expensive than standard prescription lenses, but it is kind of a cool thing to have the option to do. But now let's get to the actual smart features of this pair of smart glasses. So the feature that I actually use the most on these glasses, and it's a feature that I didn't expect to use the most, is actually the fact that these these are Bluetooth headphones. Now, according to Meta, the sound is 50% louder than it was in the previous Ray-Ban stories. The bass is apparently better as well, and so is the sound quality. So from reading the press release, I had very high expectations. And I will say that my experience with these has been mixed. First off, when you're wearing these and you're listening to music, there is sound bleed. People around you are gonna hear what you're listening to. Now, that's not such a huge deal if your music is low or you're in a louder environment, people won't really hear. And even if you do, you're not really gonna be able to discern what you're listening to, but there is definitely some sound bleed. Here, I'm gonna throw them on really quickly, play full volume, music and uh, show you what that sounds like. This is also full volume, so it's very loud in my ears. Um, not blowing out my eardrums, but definitely loud. Also, the bass isn't great. I wouldn't say it's non-existent, but especially when you're listening to a hip-hop song or something with heavy bass, you're not going to get much of it. The sound quality isn't bad, especially when it comes to mids, but when it comes to the bass, like I mentioned, not really there. It might be better than the previous one. I don't remember the bass specifically on the previous pair of stories, but I know that it's 
probably worse than this. And then the highs, they're also not bad as well. The volume also is, is lacking because you can't really get much higher than what I was playing. And at full volume, even though they are loud in my ears, if I was in a louder environment, it would still be pretty difficult to hear the music because it's not like actually in my ears. It's sort of coming in around my ears. So when comparing the sound of these to something like a pair of Apple AirPod Pros or any other kind of in-ear headphones, they're not gonna sound as good. The sound quality isn't bad, like I said, but it's not as loud as you probably will want it in certain environments. And it's not as clear or as bassy as you might want it in most cases. But I will say for taking phone calls or listening to music in certain environments when you don't have headphones, it definitely gets the job done. And speaking of phone calls, these are actually really great for phone calls. I can hear the other person really, really well. There is some sound bleed, but it's not as bad as you would think, especially outdoors. And here, let me show you guys an example of that. Talk as loudly as possible to see if there's any sound bleed, okay? Except like about normal things, nothing. <laughs> Hello? What's up, man? How you been? Oh, good, good, okay. Jordan, can you hear that or no? It's very far away sounding, not really. Okay, good. So the gout thing. Like <laughs> muffled, like I yeah, like I can hear you on the phone, but I can't hear what he's saying. Cool. Well, thank you for letting me use you for my content. See you later. Bye. When it comes to controlling the music that you're listening to on your smart glasses, it's actually very simple. First of all, you just swipe forward to raise the volume or swipe back to lower the volume. You tap to play or tap to pause. And all around the tap controls on the side of the glasses are really responsive. I had no problems whatsoever. Well, I guess there was one thing. I did try and raise the volume past the loudest amount that it could go multiple times while wearing these glasses because it just couldn't get loud enough for me. And the sound that indicates that you're at the top of the volume range isn't that loud. <laughs> so I didn't really know that I was at the top of the range. I just kept swiping and swiping and swiping and it wouldn't get any louder. So that was the only one thing, but it's a minor gripe. Now, when it comes to the sound quality for the other person that you're on the phone with, the mics actually do an incredible job of picking up your voice. In fact, better than most Bluetooth headsets. And that's because there's actually five different microphones on these glasses. You've got two right on the bridge of the nose, which actually pick up your mouth really, really well. You've got one hidden in the Ray-Ban logo. I forget which side because it's so small. And then you've got two more on the arms of the sunglasses. And overall, all, they do an excellent job of picking up your voice. It sounds crisp and clear on the other side of the phone. I love it. It's an incredible pair of phone call making glasses. Not only that, but when it comes to capturing audio on these glasses, if it's for a video or even a phone call, you get spatial audio because you have so many microphones all around the headset. So it allows you to actually hear things around you, both when you're listening to them in real life, but also when you're playing back some recordings. For example, if I was filming something and I heard a dog barking behind me on the right side, I'd hear it in the same place when I played back the video. How's it going, man? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Yo. It's honestly impressive. The audio recording on these glasses is amazing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cool if I put this part in too? With the <laughs> Yo. Good to see you, man. I'll see you guys later. Take care. But now we get to the main reason that I bought these glasses, and that's the video recording. And therein lies one of my biggest problems, and that's the fact that the lens is only on one side of the glasses, so it's really difficult to frame anything. Whether it's video or photos, I always found everything that I was filming was a little bit to the right. And that's because obviously the lens was on the left. At least, I think it's on the left. It is on the left. Now, first off, I do want to give Meta a lot of credit for improving the camera on these smart glasses. It is light years better than the previous camera. It's a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and it actually takes pretty decent photos and videos. Obviously, the quality is not groundbreaking. It's not going to replace your phone anytime soon, but it's serviceable. It's way better than it was last time. And it's not a square. This time you get a vertical shot, which is kind of annoying because if you want to take a horizontal shot, you got to do this. But... <laughs> I never did that. And for most people, that's not a problem because that's usually what you post in, whether it's on Instagram or any other social media platform. For me though, as a content creator who puts out videos on YouTube, horizontally, it's not the best format in the world. And it means that I have to crop in. And usually when you crop in on this kind of content or this kind of media from these smart glasses, you notice the problems and you notice the lack of fidelity. Why is that basketball hoop like that? I don't get it, man. <laughs> I don't get it. So will this camera be replacing my phone's camera for vlogging when it comes to thrifting or other sorts of media that I film on my phone? Probably not. But I will say these are perfect for capturing that moment that you don't have time to pull your phone out in. Or maybe you want to be involved in the moment and not worry about trying to frame everything correctly. It generally films what you're seeing. So for example, you're at the beach with your kids or you're walking your dog and he does something ridiculous or whatever the case may be, this will allow you to capture that moment instantly rather than having to whip out your phone and try and frame it correctly. Again, the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera is not bad, but it's not great. And everything's gonna be vertical. So if you like vertical, great. And again, the audio on these glasses is really 
really great, especially when it's coming from your own mouth. So if you're recording video, oh, nice. the audio is going to sound really good, at least oh, yo. whenever you're talking. But now let's get to privacy. And the way that Meta is tackling this problem, because obviously smart glasses, they're essentially spy glasses, could be used for very nefarious things. What they've done is actually increase the size of the LED in the frames. Not only that, they've also made the LED pulse, so it's a little bit more visible whenever you're indoors. Unfortunately though, when it comes to outdoors, it is more difficult to see than not. So if that's something that bothers you, privacy, at least for yourself, I don't know why it would if you're wearing these smart glasses, but it might because you're not the one getting filmed, it doesn't matter. It's not a perfect solution, but it works, and I'm glad that they decided to make the LED more visible. Obviously, when it comes to video recording, the LED pulses to let people know that you're filming them. And when it comes to taking a picture, it flickers. So I am very happy that they make it as obvious as possible that you're wearing smart glasses and that you might be taking a picture of them or something in that area. So it's not as creepy as it could be. However, it's still creepy. You got cameras in your glasses. That's pretty weird. And unfortunately, the people that will be most affected by these glasses are not the people wearing the glasses. It's the people in the pictures that don't realize that they're in the pictures. So the only thing I can say if you're trying to maintain your privacy around someone wearing these glasses is just make sure you look for the LED or see if someone's wearing Ray-Ban stories and then try and like, dodge them a little bit. So with these new glasses, Meta introduced a brand new app, which is actually a lot better than the previous Meta app, as you probably would have expected. First of all, importing photos and videos is significantly easier than it was in the past, and in a lot of cases, it happens automatically, at least if you set up those settings. And it also allows you to check some important things like the battery life of your glasses, or also change the settings of your glasses. But the main reason you'll be using this app is to download your photos and videos. And again, other than the random freezing, which has only happened to me one other time, of course it happens when I'm filming, it's a pretty decent app. And it does make it very easy easy to transfer the photos and videos from your glasses to your phone, especially if you have an iPhone. I can't speak to the Android version of the app, but it's been super easy for me to download everything and upload it. It's been amazing. Another feature that I really love is the fact that you can actually live stream directly from your glasses to your Instagram or Facebook account, which is honestly a really great feature, especially for IRL streamers, unless you're trying to film yourself, in which case you kind of have to take the glasses off and do this. So powering the brand new Ray-Ban Meta Wayfarers, you've got a Snapdragon AR2 Gen 1 processor, and it does a pretty good job of running all the tasks that you need to run on your smart glasses. Meta also increased the onboard storage on these smart glasses by eight times to 32 gigabytes, which is pretty solid and holds a lot of photos and videos, especially when you film them on this headset. I don't know why I keep calling this a headset. I think it's because I just filmed the Meta Quest review, which by the way, if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. But I don't know, smart tech, if it's on your face, headset, that's what I call it. The one thing that I've had a little bit of an issue with was battery life and the fact that it's pretty short. Now for my own personal usage where I was taking a lot of photos and videos with these glasses, I found that I got around three to three and a half hours of battery life, which is not bad. When I was only using these as regular sunglasses and occasionally using them for their sound capabilities or phone calls or something like that, they did last all day, but that was occasional usage. At the end of the day though, unlike a phone, when the battery dies on these guys, there's still a functional pair of glasses or sunglasses. And the good news is even though the battery life on these guys might not be the best in the world, they do give you a case which charges its battery like an AirPod case and actually allows you to get up to eight full charges according to Meta. Now I did charge this halfway through having these glasses just because I wanted to juice it up because I was going on a trip that day, but that was just purely for peace of mind. I don't think I needed to charge this. I don't think it was anywhere close to dead. I just wanted to have it charged. So realistically, I would be surprised if this thing goes a week. Now what's cool about this charging case is that Ray-Ban and Meta decided to redesign it so it looks just like a standard Ray-Ban case. You drop the glasses right in here like this. And there's actually an indicator LED on the front of the case that tells you whether the glasses are charging or charged. So it goes orange to show that they're charging and green to show that they're charged. And it really does charge up the glasses very, very quickly. I found that after like 45 minutes of having them in the case, they were good to go. Obviously the case charges through a USB-C port at the bottom. One thing I will say is that the package didn't come with a USB-C cable, so I had to use my own USB-C cable, which was kind of frustrating. Usually when you buy a new tech, it comes with a way to charge it. But uh, when it came to the Meta Wayfarers, they did not give you that option. So keep that in mind, buy an extra USB-C cable if you don't have one, because that's the only way to charge these guys and uh, they don't give you any other options. Definitely a weird thing not to include. It's a USB-C cable. I'm sure they were trying to save money, but still, come on. It's the only way to charge the glasses. Unlike the previous Meta Smart glasses, the way that these Ray-Bans charge is through the bridge of the nose. And that does kind of bother me a little bit because in my head, I'm thinking the oils from my face over time might build up and stop the contact between the glasses and the case itself. Obviously you could just wipe off the glasses and you should be okay, but that's where they charge now versus on the previous version where they used to charge right where the arm connected to the rest of the sunglasses. Now in terms of pricing, the Ray-Ban Meta Wayfarers start at $299, which is $130 more expensive than a standard pair of Wayfarers. However, you are getting a lot of features features like video capabilities, music capabilities, phone call making capabilities. There's a lot going on in these smart glasses and I think it does justify the price. Now the sunglasses that I got because they came with polarized lenses were $30 more. I paid $329 for these glasses, which 
is a lot of money for a pair of sunglasses, but at the end of the day, again, you're getting the smart features, and that's the main reason that you're grabbing these. You're not just grabbing these because they're good sunglasses, because in my opinion, Ray-Bans in general are just good sunglasses. So if you're looking for good sunglasses, get Ray-Bans. So getting down to it, should you buy the brand new Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses? Well, in my opinion, it's up to you. If you're willing to drop the money on these glasses, you get not only a good pair of glasses or sunglasses, you also get a pair of glasses that allow you to take videos or photos or listen to music or even make phone calls. They're pretty impressive. And the quality of these new smart glasses versus the previous Ray-Ban stories is just night and day. It's so much better. Obviously, I would have preferred if you were able to switch the aspect ratio of the video from vertical to horizontal, but unfortunately, you don't have that option. But Overall, they're amazing. I really like them a lot. I'm gonna keep this pair, I'm not gonna return it. And uh, while I definitely think it's more of a luxury item than anything else, I don't think you need these. If you have a phone, you're fine. But uh, if you want a pair of sunglasses that does a lot of stuff in addition to being a pair of sunglasses, then go with these. But hey, those are just my thoughts on the brand new Ray-Ban Meta Wayfarers. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below, so make sure to let me know. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.